and welcome back to game two of G2 versus RNG, the seventh of the day. And the pressure is on the European representatives to show us that they can take the fight to the only pre-tournament favorite still standing, Royal Never Give Up. Gentlemen, uh, G2 Esports, they have picked Blue Side. Now, in the first game, we we're talking about how the solo lanes for G2 are their strengths. And I liked the fact that uh, Let Me and Xiaohu pick champions into matchups that could help mitigate G2 strengths. Do you think it's easier or harder now G2's on blue side? I think it's actually harder for RNG to be able to, to kind of force this. I talked about it in the last draft, the fact that Urgot really doesn't have losing matchups. It mitigates a lot of the issues up there. With G2 on the blue side, RNG may be forced into at least an Urgot ban or something along those lines, or perhaps even an Urgot uh, and Aatrox ban, which could open up for some more picks uh, for G2. I'd also really like to see them not give a winning matchup over to Ming and uh, Uzi. Uzi, just because this is the lane that this team likes to play around, and I feel like that they're just so good at doing it. Yeah. Outside of just Uzi and Ming's ability to build 2v2 leads, that like putting a priority on the Rakan and leaving things like the Leona open, I just feel like G2 should be a little bit more patient and wait to see what RNG tried to draft before then uh, locking in their bot lane. Well, already they are making some adaptations, taking away that Talia uh, that was very, very effective in the first game, especially at attacking the bottom lane, walling them off and looking for those dives. I also think that it funnels Kasa into either Gragas or Lee Sin. Those have really been the only other two champions that he's played uh, in playoffs and so far at Worlds. Uh, and perhaps G2 have recognized that, hey, if we take him off this and put him on one of those champions, his impact can be slightly mitigated. But then lower impact, Kasa, Lee Sin, I don't know if you can really say those same things in the same sentence. Well, Azale, you wanted to see the Aatrox and Urgot potentially banned away. They are. And near Instalock Akali for G2 Esports, we know that this is a team that can flex that top mm -hmm. or mid. So I'm interested to see how the rest of the draft plays out. One of the things that is a bit concerning, though, is we have seen it be fairly ineffective into tanks. Uh, and if you draft Lissandra plus a tank, uh, we know that Shahu can also play, you know, things like Scion mid, and you have the possibility of putting it in a matchup where it's tougher to snowball. I also think that the advantage that Akali has is that you can flex it to both top and mid. And even though Lissandra has been locked in, very likely for Xiaohu, given that this used to be one of his big comfort picks uh, when he first joined the pro scene, um, they also get themselves the other flex pick in wow. Aurelia as well. So G2 taking full utilization of the flexibility of Aurelia and Akali, and will try to give the best possible matchup to either one. And you can see that the blue side has already given them some more flexibility. Two of the bans from RNG in game number one are the first two picks for G2. Both Akali and Tom Kench were taken away uh, by RNG when they were on the blue side. They felt that they had to take away the Alistar and the Urgot for those first picks. And now G2 is going to get some of those picks that were so highly prioritized by RNG. Now, I think that we're looking at a Jin pick again for G2. So RNG should consider trying to take it off the board. There's also uh, the possibility of something a little more safe, like the Civ here. But if you wanted to try and match the aggression, you'd be looking at champions like maybe Draven or Callista. But naturally, when you look at Yarnin, he's not the kind of player that picks those styles of champ. And definitely not the one we were expecting coming into this series. You know, we talked a lot about Hyanin's play style. And one of the things that Jat said a few days ago that I really liked was how he sort of categorized Hyanin as a mage style player, you know, with the high mat, the brand, the gin, as opposed to the likes of, you know, the Lucian, for example. Uh, the one thing I do want to just quickly comment, Tom Kench, what did? It is his most played champion by far. 24 games played, next is 15 on Alistair. And it is one of his big comfort picks. And the jungle pool has been hit. Knocked in. Leeson Olaf. And we're going to have to see here, is he going to be pushed outside of that kind of triumvirate of bot lane carries that you talked about? Because the Jin is gone, the Heimer is gone. He could look to something like the Sivir, but it obviously plays fairly differently than some of these spellcasters. Brand would be available if they want to go that route, but we'll see if they're going to be willing to do that because against the Rakan and the Lucian, if you miss any of those skill shots, if your stun gets dashed, certainly is the potential to all in. I right, see as well the RNG going for an aggressive early game. We talked a little bit about Kasa. He typically has played the Gragas outside of the uh, Lee Sin or Talia, but he's adding Xin Zhao there as well. Not really that surprising. Uh, and I think that it facilitates as well an ability to play around the bot side of the map. And what we talked about last game was G2 need to try and limit Xiaohu's ability to roam towards the bot side, along with denying RNG a strong two versus two. So far, RNG have the strong two versus two. They have a Lissandra for roaming. 
and they've got Castle on an early game playmaker as well. So I feel like RNG drafting in a very similar style to what we saw in game one. Yeah, they certainly are. Um, a bit less of a front line, but oh, yes, you sure. know, we'll see how that's actually going to play into G2, which who very clearly again is going for 1 3 1. I think the Varus does make quite a bit of sense. Strong laning AD, especially paired with the Tom Kench, should be fairly safe against this Varus and Lucian. Uh, the Shen here, though, uh, is going to be pretty interesting because Shen does, again, enable very heavily more diving, more of the same style of play. And I, I want to point out, though, that G2, while they certainly are trying to play the style of, of lost kind of minimization in the bottom lane, Karnan has been playing pretty well. You know, he has, I think, got some flack unfairly. You know, he is third highest in DPM across the board at Worlds, has been performing quite well on picks such as the Jin and some others as well. And this, this is his first virus, by the way, on the World Championship stage. And as you've mentioned, parties in the bot lane, pressure on him and what did to perform this game. And it was a champion that he played fairly regularly during the regular season, so he is pretty familiar with the champion as well. We'll see how he holds out up against Uzi and Ming, who have been known to be very dominant in the two versus two, but we're also seeing the Aurelia in the mid lane for Perks going up against Xiao, who's Lissandra, and Wonder on this Akali. Uh, slightly better matchups for the Akali and the Aurelia, but still, a lot of RNG's playstyle is their ability to team fight and play around the bot side of the map. Well, you touched on it. G2 Esports played with that virus a lot during the regular season. G2 are now, again, finding themselves in a position where they got two of their comfort picks, the Irelia, the Akali, Perks, and Wanda. What can they do with it? It will be Akali in the top lane with Wanda going into Let Me Shin. And uh, Perks will be running that Irelia in the mid lane going up against Shao Ku's Lissandra. And now, again, expectations are pretty much identical to last time around. Uh, Perks and Wanda want to get ahead. They want to be set up to be able to split push and play that one through one style. Whereas for RNG, they want to try and break that top bot tower as early as possible. They want to play through Uzi. We're going to see a lot of Xiaohu roams. We're going to see a lot of Let Me Ultimates. And we're basically going to see again Uzi trying to carry this team. Yeah, and I want to see whether or not Uzi's counterpart, Yarnin, can actually put up a fight because we're going to talk a lot about RNG as this tournament continues to play out and they are the expected favorites this series. Six consecutive finals, they finally won them this year. G2 made five consecutive finals, won four of them. They faltered in spring, they fell in the quarterfinals of summer and they had to run through the regional, uh, regional qualifier. Then they had to play in through the play-ins and then they find themselves in a group where they actually step up and prove their 1-3-1 style does work on the world stage, and now they're going up against one of the world's best. And it's so interesting to see that this team, who had been so regionally dominant for so long, always failed to get out of groups at Worlds. And it's this iteration, the one that did not have as much regional success, the one that struggled, but did find its own identity, did find its own path to success. And I feel that that has been such a clear story over the years for the Western teams at Worlds, that you can't always just play standard and get out. When you look at you know teams like this for G2, very defined 1-3-1 style. When you look at C9 and the reason that they have had success, it's often been, again, about a defined style. Play your game, as Captain Flowers the would say, and has it. I've fallen in love with that catchphrase quite a lot, and Yamato gave an inspirational speech once Vitality were eliminated. Vitality themselves picked up a win against Will Never Give Up during the group stages. And we're going to keep a close eye on the early laning and how Castle will impact it. Remember in the previous game with Tilia, he got himself the double scuttle crab, and despite the fact that Yankos was able to pick up first blood, helping out Hyanin, Unfortunately, the rest of the attention to the bottom lane favored RNG and allowed Royal never give up just to accelerate that mid-game in their favor. So we talked a little bit about the 2v2 matchup earlier on, and to be fair, the one thing that's, that I often very readily forget is how surprisingly powerful a Tom Kench and a Varus lane actually is, largely because the range advantage the Varus has over so many other AD carries, combined with the just constant harassment and peel that a Tom Kench provide, means that you can actually get pretty solid push in the laning phase. You can see if Yannan's ever in danger, oh, he gets taken to safety by that of what did. So uh, already they're trying to put some pressure down onto Uzi and Ming, and they just have to be cautious of a potential early gank from Kasa. And they've also got to be really careful about how you use those Devourers now on the Tom Kench, because on this patch, it is a very long cooldown, especially at rank one. So if you use that very early on, they can look to attack you while that is down. Yeah, and of course, it was a Tom Kench nerf during the middle of the season that actually really hurt G2 Esports. What it was one of the prolific users of TK down in the bottom lane. 
once that landing power started to struggle and hurt them. You can see in this bottom lane though, 12 CS to 13, slowly pushing towards Uzi and Ming, and Kasa, we caught a glimpse of him taking that second scuttle as well. Yeah, it's also interesting to note that you do see double cleanse here on the side of G2, both Perks and Wooded taking that. Because there is this Lissandra, there is the Shantan, there's so much CC, you have to give that respect over to it. But it does make it harder for Perks to get that 1v1 kill that he really wants to try to find on Aurelia. I also want to make a quick note of the ward that Yanko's just put down. You'll see that there's a control ward just outside of the red buff, but there was no jungle camps for him to clear around the bot side of the map. And the reason for this is with a big minion wave pushing in, he wanted to make sure that Kasa didn't come into the bot side jungle unseen. But he just cleared out a ward, and now he's setting up for a potential dive. Yeah, and even if they don't go for this dive, at the very least, they may be able to zone G2 off of the wave. We'll see if they commit to it. Yankos is coming. The Devour needs to be perfect. Manages to gobble up Hyun, and this buys some time. Uzi takes a tower shot, and Xiao who commits and completes the teleport. This is a four versus three. I don't think there's a risk of a dive with Xiao who backing away. The G2 read the play, read the dive, and defended perfectly. And what a surprise. RNG tried to play around bot lane. <laughs> uh, they commit four members down there. Zhao, who once again at level four, using his teleport to try and find some early kills, results in RNG just getting a slight pressure advantage down towards the bot side of the map and starting to build that CS lead. Yeah, but this is really good. I, I would say the trade is certainly worthwhile as perks. Not only does he establish a CS advantage and push in, is they're going for Yarnin. Ooh, Ming jumps in. If he got that knock up, it may have worked. Yarnin summon a heal will keep him alive through the Ignite, but RNG already up 11 CS. They push Hanan out of the wave, and this is again rinse and repeat like a previous game. Yeah, that last trade does make it pretty rough because it had been you know, fairly even as far as the CS advantages and disadvantages in mid compared to bot, and the TP was down for Shahu, but now that Varus is sent back to base early without a really strong buy, and RNG get a free reset, it does get a lot tougher. Naturally, it's, it's really hard for Jonathan too. Like, what are you supposed to do when four people yes. show up in your bot lane yes. at like level four? Yeah. It's, a, it's a really difficult thing to deal with. And once again, it looks like Yankos is taking on the approach of, I'm going to try and stem the bleeding. But at level six in mid lane and top lane, uh, I would like to see Yankos trying to get either Wonder or Perks ahead because this was something that we didn't see from him last game. And while Wonder and Perks did very well in terms of their isolated 1v1, their leads weren't big enough to be able to threaten what RNG were doing and setting up elsewhere on the map. Well, unlike the previous game, Fedius, uh, Yankos was in range to respond to the first roam down bot. So a little bit of adaptation and growth here on the side of G2. <laughs> Wadid's even going to steal I away the <laughs> scuttle with a little bit of a for the cameras, boy. I actually love that. Uh, Wadid, of course, has been playing in the UL ULCS for a while, and he's been the duo of Hyanin for a very long time. And going back to last year, one of the things that Wadid talked about was he just didn't want to be another Korean. He's going to need to save his AD carry, spits out Hyanin, who takes so much damage from Ming's engage. And for Wadid, playing in front of his home crowd, there's a lot on the line. And Kasa once again just showing this isn't a 2v2. Yahoo as well. This is a 3v2, 4v2, 5v2. If RNG could put a Rift Herald to do that as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the important thing here for RNG is even if you can't dive, if you're pushing them off of farm, you're creating a bigger and bigger advantage. You can see Yarnan falling quite far behind in the CS, but. It's been a good job by G2 to at least absorb the pressure and not give up the kills. We've also got to acknowledge that Kiana and Wadid in that situation, taking a couple of unfavorable trades, Lucian utilizing his mobility to kind of get in close to Kiana and avoid Wadid and kind of take these small chip trades is forcing Kiana and low, getting him underneath his tower in a situation that allows RNG to create these dives. Another thing I want to talk about a little bit is the fact that G2, oh, as we may see a solo kill here, let's oh, see. Oh, there's a stun. Where's the ulti from Perks? He's holding onto it for now. And Xiaohu just uses the claw to get out alive. But it's these are solo laners now for G2 that I think come online a lot earlier. Both of them, as soon as you hit six, have kill pressure. And I think there's more pressure from the Aurelia and the Akali early on than there is uh, from last game coming out of the rise in the Aatrox. So if RNG tries to force G2 to group up and fight, I think there's more potential for G2 to get onto Uzi and take him out. Yeah, you can see that in the CS numbers there, Azael. 62 to 51 in favor of Wonder versus Let Me. 74 to 53 in favor of Perks over Xiaohu. Keep in mind that Xiaohu has roamed at least once, or recall correctly, twice in fact. Yeah. But Uzi and Ming, they are doing work. Nearly double the CS advantage over Hyanin and Wadid. A full culling into Tom Kinch. 
Speed by were dead. And look, this tower's gonna fall very, very shortly. 25 CS up, it's such a difficult scenario for G2 Esports. If your eyes on Carson, he's just sitting in this brush, waiting for the Shroud to expire. Let's take a look. Wonder, low in energy. There goes the Twilight Shroud. He's still there. Waiting for the engage. Yang oh, Yang's nearby. Here as well. He's level six as well, Vidius. That's what you wanted to see. Here comes the dashes from Wonder. He's going to get taunted up. Yankos gets the body boot down. Starting to channel the Shen ulti as the barrel splits Kasa and let me away. Wonder escapes by the skin of his teeth at the cost of the bottom tower. And unfortunately for G2, they're not able to find anything in the top side, whereas RNG secured their first tower of the game even earlier than they did last time around. The bot lane is being shut down in favor of RNG, and then they're gonna look to continue with this pressure. All right, Jankos was threatening a dive. Kasa still hasn't completed his recall. This now, is risky. Azale, the solo lane is for G2 in a good position, but look at the duo. Uzi and Ming are already unlocked. They're already making their move. The fall is too ready. Jahu. That's a good stun. Vanguard's edge bounces in, but Perks is left alone. He's left to dive, manages to pick up first blood, traded back with Corsa. It's a one for one in the top lane. Nice proactive play there from G2. Unfortunately, Perks does go down, but they get first blood onto him, and he has the CS advantage in the mid lane, so maybe he can make something happen with this individual gold lead. But RNG were very quick to make their way up towards the top side. Yeah. They saw the dive coming, and they were ready to shut it down. If it weren't for Perks' fancy feet and good outplay, that could have ended a lot worse for the side of G2, but RNG still sit with the gold lead and Uzi already making his way towards the turn. And this was always going to be a tough dive to make when there's no ult on Wonder, there's no ult on Yanko, so let me goes back towards Yanko's trying to attack him, but Perks hitting everything here, getting the resets, and even though Lemmy is able to get over the wall and flash out after the parry zone, Perks just turns his attention onto Karsa. And, uh, Perks so close to getting out with his life, but unfortunately, he took one too many tower shots, one where Yankos was forced to flash out after getting aggro, and then obviously that second one at the very end there meant that he did lose his life, but having completed the team out now, working towards the Trinity Force, as you mentioned earlier, Azale, things not all bad for the side of G2, as their solo laners are picking up a lot of farm and a lot of gold. And of course, it's been Wonder and Perks that have really stepped here, here on the World Championship stage. When you see the CS differences, we see Perks get first blood, I'm a little more confident Here's in Perks Perks's again. Irelia finding Uzi. And even if he can't kill Uzi, the threat alone, the zoning power, allows the four other members of G2 Esports to potentially win these skirmishes. So there are tools here, and that's before we even include Akali in the picture. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that if RNG, when you look at this game state compared to last time, if they just try to walk over to Rift Herald and start that up, you can get contested. You yeah. can get taken down there. So certainly, RNG is going to have to play this a lot more carefully. Uh, they do still have very good advantages here on their AD carry, but the rest of the map is going worse for them, and those members on G2 who are ahead have an easier time getting involved. All right, Glacial Tomb's already been used on to Perks. He's going to try to get some damage reduction down. Kosa gets turned around. It's a one for one. Both junglers picking up the Things kills. Coming. Kosa being chunked down by those ice shards. And that's a flash forward from Shahu. Here comes the Abyssal Void. Yanko stays alive just long enough to get to Val, but I think the Ignite might tick him down. He oh. survived! How did he survive? What did is now looking for Ming. Here comes Wonder on the Akali. He's 0 0 1. He's gonna get gobbled up here by Ming. He flashes over the wall or dashes over the wall, is a little bit more correct. And Wonder will be helped out by what did. There's the blast cone here to safety. Ming's taking them on a wild goose chase. He could get the execute. Will it be long enough? That's the question. Execute, secure it. That is a gigantic advantage denying the goal to Wonder. So that overall ends up being a one for one. And while all of this has been going on, Uzi was pushing in the top lane. You saw Let Me sitting in bot lane, freely farming up the, the farm that was unavailable to him earlier. And everything so far still in advantage towards RNG. I think there's more playmaking potential on the side of G2. It's what we were talking about just before that play. You can see the power of the Irelia, the Akali, the Tom Kench. The tools are there for G2 to wield to try and keep this game close. It's only 400 gold difference. And I think importantly, the strong members have the playmaking tools because there was playmaking obviously on Arakan yeah. and on the Gragas last yeah. game, but now your fed members are the ones who get to pick their fights more easily. They're the ones who get to choose what fights they can win, which fights they can, and uh, they're gonna have the opportunity to try to take over this game.
And it's unfortunate that for one day he couldn't find that execute. If he had just been a little more patient with his ultimate, then he might have been able to find Ming. But Ming using his quick thinking to jump over the, into the red buff meant that Wonder had no more dashes to lock that one down. Now, RNG have their AD carry up towards the top side. They don't actually have pressure mid, so starting this is a little risky. Along with the fact that Wonder has no teleport, Let Me has both TP and ulti. So perhaps they're relying on that to start this objective off. All right, so let's take a look as the two teams start to collapse. One of the things that we've not talked a huge amount about is Let Me on the Shen. He's still down 40 CS in lane, having a little bit of a tough time as a lot of actions happen elsewhere on the map. But if G2 set up a 131, one of the best tools in the game in dealing with that is having that stand united, having the Shen available if and when needed. So for example, Xiao Hu's under threat now. The Vanguard's edge comes out. They shall path used to safety. Had Xiao Hu gone any lower, with no flash, no hourglass, Let Me could have been called in for some support, get stunned up, and that cooldown, that window of opportunity, is also something G2 have to factor into the decision making. Yeah, it definitely is. And, you know, when you're looking towards the Shen versus the Kali matchup, you want to see Wonder, you know, do more than just establish a CS advantage. Now that he's on Gunblade, he should really be able to bully this matchup, and you want to see him try to turn it into a turret or a kill or something. Well, there's the uh, Tom Kench. It's been unbenched. Yankos with a flash body slam. We'll look for Xiao Hu. Now, keep your eyes on Ming. If he gets a good knockup, there could be some follow up, but there's not. Four members of G2 collapse, they get the kill. Love the use of the Tom Kench ultimate there to set up a collapse onto Zhao, who has just been constantly pressured by perks in the middle lane. They're able to find themselves a kill at last after the no flash and no zonias, but you know, we keep flicking over to these side lanes. Every time G2 tried to make a play, Uzi is getting more gold, more farm, and more pressure. He's pretty much been playing PvE for yeah. the last 10 minutes. <laughs> he does he that a will, lot. He will get to the point where he is the raid boss. And then we see whether or not G2 can take him down. So we're going to have a look back at how this play kicked off. Uh, you can see on the minimap that Tom Kench had already set up the flank ready. They decided to just abandon the top lane tower and they figured, hey, if we get a kill onto mid, maybe we can convert this into either a mid tower or a rift tower. And as we say that, here's that rift tower. All right, rift tower just about to be secured. R &D, but though. The man that's been charmed up, knocked up, knocked down. Rift tower is secured, but at the cost of what it's life. Now it's a four versus five. And that Stand United from Let Me was monumental. A flash forward will not be enough to secure the kill yet until the rest of RNG collapse. So Rift Herald picked up, but at the cost of two. Yeah, but you can see G2 able to at least dictate the pace of the game somewhat. They're the ones starting up the neutral objective. They do lose a kill here, but at least they got the Rift Herald and can try to trade that later for a tower. But I think that overall, the fact that Uzi finds himself another kill, the fact that both the teleport from Wonder was used along with both summoners on Sharnan, means that I feel that this allows RNG to generate a lot more pressure on the map because they still have double teleport. Let me didn't he only had to use his ultimate rather than that global, and they can now better collapse on these side lanes, as we can see. Xiao Hu, ooh, he decided to move away and not go for it. Remember, summon a spell less Boris? Yeah. I was just like, well, that's going to be a dead AD carry. Not this time around. Yeah, I mean, he didn't know where the rest of the G2 members were, so was a little bit afraid to go for it. Had he been able to see the map as we do, I think that would have certainly been a dead Varus. In this case, uh, discretion. TP the bot. Valor there, and they're going to look for Wonder. All right, Wonder's got Flash available to him. He's going to be able to dash over the wall for now. Being collapsed on by all five members of RNG. The Twilight Shroud will buy some time. Now Wonder's going to need to get over the wall. That's summon a spell used. While that's going on, Uzi. Perks and are picking a fight. Wonder finds Ming. Perks gets Uzi. And just like that, who baited whom? So I thought this is going to be exactly what we talked That's about. Huge. RNG with the globals were going to try and attack one of the side lanes, but Wonder with the fancy feet escapes from that situation. G2 collapse on two members mid. They kill both Uzi and Ming and secure mid tower. Fantastic response from G2. They're going to get two towers off this because Kiarden was pushing on the top side. This is massive for G2 there as Perks is able to essentially corral Uzi into the fleeing wonder. He picks up a kill on the way out and says, thank you very much. Do you believe? That is the <laughs> question. I thought we had quick two shot, not free. Two towers up there. have been picked They're up. They're affecting each other. And G2 <laughs> Esports are saying and throwing down a gauntlet to prove themselves and rise to the challenge of RNG. So here we see Zhao Hu with the teleport, with the Shen, with the Xin Zhao. They're thinking, oh, we can get the collapse. And now Uzi, he's curing a ward. He thinks he's fine. He gets stunned up into the double knockup. And then just the collapse from only two members of G2 finds himself a quick kill. Now, I think this was greedy <laughs> from Perks. He didn't need to flash that kill. Wonder was like, bro, I've got this. Um, but in the end, 
both solo laners find a kill each, and now G2, they actually sit with the gold lead as we approach the 20 minute mark. Yeah, I mean, there's no better feeling than that as Wonder, you escape a TP gank, and a 5% HP <laughs> Rakan just hops on you. You're like, well, okay, thank you. And remember that when RNG lost in the group stages, it is when the overall gold was even, or they were slightly behind coming into the mid game. And G2 so far have controlled the early snowball that Uzi and Ming tried to develop. And of course, both Cloud9 and Vitality pushed RNG by being proactive, by forcing skirmishes or playing into RNG, not allowing their opponents to dictate the tempo. Let's see what G2 can do. They've got much more of an open map They've got themselves big item spikes. Yannan is still down. Despite Chuchu being marginally ahead on gold, he is behind Uzi by a thousand gold. But that is made up for by the fact that Akali and uh, Aurelia are doing so well. And that's just off of the turret gold. When you look at the farm, he's really not that far behind. He has gotten a kill for himself as well. So uh, certainly all the time that G2 spent attacking them around the mid lane, Yarnan's free farming top, he kills a turret of his own. That bought so much time and really got him back into the game. And G2 are now set up in a spot where they really can get the split push going, where they really can have this strong three-man squad, and it becomes more difficult for RNG to force the issue. And the, thi the one thing that I will say about one, um, sorry, Yarnan that he is very good at is because he so regularly plays in these one 3 ones he has a very good awareness of where he should be on the map. He knows how to push, he knows how to use the pressure that, he's, uh, that his team is generating for him. And if he hasn't fallen too far behind and the enemy bot lane is snowballing out of control, he and Wadid are very smart about keeping mid lane under control to allow his side laners to do what they do so well. Well, how long can they hold onto their mid outer turret? So far, G2 have the tower lead and RNG are starting to put pressure. We saw Xiaohu, he shoved in top, went all the way to inner turret. Let me has just called that bottom lane as we saw the tower falling. And we enter this mid-game phase, it's 20 minutes on the clock with no clear advantage for either team yet. The next few minutes of play can be very, very influential. The piercing arrow will help out, but look, that's just a lot of damage down. G2 doesn't have the numbers to defend that, uh, that push. They didn't, but at least, you know, again, you compare this to the last game, Perks is already approaching the tier two top. They have more pressure on the side lanes and they have the ability to at least hang on to these turrets and, you know, slow it down which is going to force RNG to reset, which is going to allow G2 to have more time, and they're looking to just repeat the cycle over and over and over. Yeah, look at the pressure top. Perks was able to shove that in, get a couple of wards in the uppermost quadrant of the jungle. And G2 are going into this mid-game with a very real, very fighting chance to even out the series. So this is a very different game to what we saw last time. Largely because in game one, RNG, after having a very strong 2v2 in the bot side, took an early tower, and they translated that lead that the duo generated all across the map. And they just kept pushing and pushing and pushing until they found that team fight against G2, which they then snowballed into a Baron. This time around, G2's solo laners are much stronger. RNG can't just as conveniently threaten a team fight because not only can the Akali and Irelia offer a huge amount more in these fights, especially with this squishy account from RNG, but in a side lane, no one can really deal with the 1v1 that uh, G2 have built up for themselves. They certainly can't, but I do think for RNG, two items on your mid laner, two items on your AD carry, this is again where you try to force the fight. And RNG, I would say, is the best team in the world at fighting around their power spikes. They're so good at finding these windows of opportunity where they are at their strongest, and I would say this is one of them. And of course, they've been tested time and time again. Talked a little bit about how this is the year of the LPL. Invictus Gaming have qualified for the semifinals and are waiting for another rematch with RNG if RNG can advance. And of course, this is what we'll never give up are trying to do try to get three teams potentially into the semifinals here at Worlds. Yeah, and I mean, RNG would be feeling very good about that potential finals, you know, semifinals rather, having beaten IG twice in best of fives this year in the LPL. Uh, it has been that somewhat inevitable feeling for RNG as they are just building up more and more momentum, winning spring, winning MSI, winning Rift Rivals, winning summer. Now here we are and G2 is looking to put a halt to it. And over in China, over in the LPL, uh, that's the golden road, winning every single event throughout the year. Frost Grin talked about it in that feature about Uzi earlier today and this team with this roster are closer than they've ever been. Now, of course, they still need to get through G2 Esports and at 22 minutes, the second time they siege that mid out, so they get it down to 5% HP. The next wave 
If they stick with it, should be enough. But we start to pay attention to Baron. We start to pay attention to the minimap. I don't think Vision is the deepest for either team. So we need to see a proactive forward moving play. Vedis, which direction do you think it's going to come from as Turks goes a little bit Ooh. hunting? The Vanguard's edge misses. Oh. The Chain of Corruption misses. It's a comedy of errors as G2 cannot land a skill shot. Xiaohu walks Whoa. away with his life. He manages to self the three. ultimate. And now Wadid, he needs to run away. He flashed forward, remember, and is the target on the front line. Wonders pulling away, let me as Wadid gets taken out by Uzi. G2 bit off way more than they could chew. And they didn't need to force a play like that. They overcommit very heavily, expending a lot of their ultimates, and they will be lucky if all they lose is just their support's life, because that was multiple missed ultimates. And he's already under the turret. When you miss the Verisol, when you miss, you know, a, a lot of those abilities, you need to say, okay, that sucks, but let's back off, let's reset. We're spreading the map. We're already doing very well. That was really bad, Quick Shot. That was like really <laughs> bad. Like, you know, you just asked what do these teams want to do, and I was gonna say not that. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say RNG. They're the ones that kind of need to, to uh, force a fight, or they need to be the ones to try to make a play happen. Uh, one of the ways in which they could have done that was like start to control the river a little bit more. They have the Shen off on a side lane, but here it's actually G2, and I understand the idea, right? Attack one of the side lanes with the Tom Kench ultimate, bring someone in. You have the uh, mid priority, and so I think this play in essence is fine. And if they land everything, they find a kill onto Xiaohu, everything looks good, they get full this vision control. That did for G2. They missed everything, and then they tried to dive. And RNG were like, yeah, no, you're not allowed to do that. And they very quickly punished them. I mean, it was a, it was a great initial play there by Shao, flashing the ultimate out of perks, but then the stun misses, the Varus ult misses, everything kind of falling apart there for G2, though. Luckily for them, still ahead. It's only a support death. It is certainly not a death blow by any means. We have RNG now grouping around objectives, trying to get G2 to come to them. Yeah, I'm looking at the flashes. I mean, perks and what did commit to his, but with we did having the unsealed spellbook. He swapped that away to a ghost. So 25 minutes, RNG will secure their second break. They are only a thousand gold down. And they're going to be sitting very comfortably. It was quite funny because leading up to that fight, Azal, you'd mentioned how RNG are one of the best teams at fighting with power spikes. Uh, just before that fight broke out, Hyanan picked up the Rage Blade. Um, good attempt, failed execution. And I'm going to go back to the same question. Let's talk about like. What are the steps these teams need to do for G2? It's get Vision, set up a 1-3-1, one, one, have pushing waves, and then either look to threaten the inner turret or potentially Baron. No, you, you do what they just did. You attack the sides. Because the thing about Tom Kench ulti, um, I think the best example is when they played against Flash Wars and they used the Nocturne ultimate to kind of come down a lane and find a pick. You can do a very similar thing with Tom Kench, but to do that, you need to have vision control and you need to have mid lane priority. Now, uh, in order to generate that, you have to have pressure on the side lane. So what you'll see from G2 is Wonder will push up, Perks will push up, Wonder will maybe start roaming up to mid, and this is the kind of situation where you'll see if Let Me was in the lane, they will look to try and use a Tom Kench ultimate to find a collapse, find a pick, and then a 4v5, then they can maybe look for a team fight. Um, but for RNG, the problem is it's going to get harder and harder because these silence are going to get more difficult to kill. So the windows with which they have to kind of force a fight and the windows where they'll even have the pressure to do that are becoming shorter and shorter. I'd also caution 4G2 attacking away from the global. If you attack someone other than the Shen, it becomes very easy for RNG to have a second member there. If that is a play towards the Shen, it may have a better chance of working out. And you know, as you were just pointing out, Uzi now on three items, hits that power spike. This is, again, another opportunity where they are at an extremely strong point. The Phantom Dancer is looking to duel. All right, Wanda's going to get blown oh, up before he can do anything. They're going to Baron. He had Flash, he had Hourglass, and he had no time to use it. Touching on the three item Uzi, he's got a Phantom Dancer as his third pickup. I love that when you consider Akali and Irelia are going to be jumping onto him, and RNG are the ones that find the pick and get control. And this is what we didn't get the chance to talk about, is RNG punishing the rotations from the side of G2 as they find that First pick and now Kasa's fan perk. All right, Stand Unite has been channeled onto Kasa. The Vanguard's Edge comes out, lots of dashing in and out, and Perk stays alive just long enough for Yankos to get there. Chain of Corruption this time round starts to spread on the RNG members, and Yankos is left for dead. Takes the Blasco now to safety as a flawless break. The They're winning this! Yankos! How 
hell did you find Uzi? Uzi, why were you face checking? RNG are now running for their lives. As Shao Hu is low, and devour from Wadid by some time. G2 are low as well. These teams oh, are fighting the on a knife's edge. Wonder will complete the teleport, and RNG sense impending doom. Let me look for the re engage. As Shao Hu is dropped to the back line, Wonder's looking for Kasa, and Ming is running for his life. Let me's down. RNG are down, and G2 Ace Royal never give up. And that was all off the back of beautiful play from Perks. In a one versus five, he buys enough time for the rest of G2 to turn around an overcommitted RNG. It will likely be a Baron as well. Quick shot, this is not how I was expecting this game to unfold, but G2 come out on top. Oh, you think that is gonna be the fight that wins the game for RNG? It's a 5v4 from them. A clean pick on Wonder. Over to Baron, and you think, Perks is surely gonna die here. In our Acer Predator replay, we see the Shen ultimate coming through. They're looking for Perks, but he's able to actually dodge out and, and avoid a lot of the damage with his cleanse, kiting back to his team. His Sterix is buying a lot of time. And then Uzi just walks straight into that Varus ultimate, gets found. And still from here, it looks like they could have backed off, but Uzi goes over the wall by himself, face checks straight in and gives up his life. And that was a good punish from G2, but a big mistake from Uzi as well. At this point, RNG are kind of dancing in and out. They don't have an AD carry, they need to disengage. But the teleport is available for Wonder. He comes in from behind, and then with all of his abilities up, he's ready to clean up the fight. And this is the best choice for RNG, seeing the TP come in. Try to turn and win the 4v3, you know, 4v4 from that situation, because you cannot run back into Wonder. It'll just be a meat grinder there but G2, get an ace, get a Baron, and what an incredible turnaround. 4,000 gold lead in a 1-3-1 one, one composition, and look at the damage difference. That is Hyonin at 5,100 for the team fight versus the 1,000 of Uzi. And this will be a little bit of a replay as one is going to be able to get the Shroud down. Kasa coming up behind Xiao Hu. The Wonder escapes with his life. And look at the minimap. G2 have already taken the inner turret. This is the 1-3-1, one, one, ladies and gentlemen. G2, they're not just pushing one lane, they're pushing multiple. And as RNG send four members to the bot side of the map, G2 are quick to secure themselves two towers. Yeah, this gold lean is just exploding. And now for RNG, they're being sieged in the base. They're almost forced into an engage here, but G2 is setting this up very, very well. You have Wonder in the mid lane, pushing in the waves. We'll see if RNG can force us back or find that engage. All right, I'm keeping my eyes on the positioning. RNG group towards this top inner turret as Wonder is waiting for those minions to just conga line their way to the mid turret. There's a minute and a half on Baron. And the inhibitor turret in the top lane is chunked down very low for G2. Got to be a little careful they don't get jumped on. And the Shin, the Lissandra, the Zin, because when an engage happens, it is quick, it is efficient, and RNG can shut down G2. Now, G2 ideally would like to send someone bot to clear that one out, but they don't have a teleport anywhere else on that roster. Now, they're just going to try and set up the kind of 1-4 or, you know, just push these two lanes in for now, utilize the Baron buff as much as possible. You have the virus with pretty good range, staying outside of Uzi, and it's let me. You just have to be careful of it. Yanin gets close to the tower. All right, Wonder's gonna be back on that mid lane. RNG looking for some sort of initiation. Kasa will find a three talent strike onto Perks. Xiaohu, I was holding my breath for that glacial path. He chose not to follow it up. There's an infernal Drake waiting in the pit to be secured. There's a minion wave pushing towards G2 Esports, and they have not yet cracked open the base. A small thing here, note how Hyanin isn't pushing the wave because he's waiting for mid to hit the tower at the same time. They're trying to divide RNG so that they can't just immediately force a fight, but Hyanin's so close. Oh, look at that! Look at that! That's what happens when ultimates connect! Chain of Corruption as well as the Rankos Barrel. They find a pick onto Ming. Now, Kossa and Xiaohu are jumping under Perks. Perks throws down the stopwatch, stays alive for a few seconds longer, flashes out to safety. The top inhibitor turret is secured as Kossa and Xiaohu are like, screw the base, we want the kills, mates. They're chasing Wonder and Perks. This feels personal. Wonder will have some support as Yonin comes in with the Abyssal Void. Xiaohu escapes with his life for now, and now Kossa will get taken down. Yonin is on a rampage. The inhibitor fell. Another inhibitor 
inhibitor's going down. The G2 may just continue to push here. They're going to get a second inhibitor for sure. 40 seconds on Karsa, so they'll retreat to the Infernal Dragon. They have taken full control of the game. And expectations are once again being defied. G2 are playing to their style. They're allowing RNG no opportunities to come back into this game. Two inhibitors are down as G2 sit 9,000 gold over the MSI champion. But we have seen RNG turn around games. We have seen them make the miracle happen. So G2 need to continue playing smart. Spend your gold. Don't necessarily risk this over an Infernal Dragon. Set up the 1-3-1. Two inhibitors are down. Play it slow. Close out this game. G2 will just back away, and we'll get to see a replay of how this happened again. Note how the map is being divided right now. Three versus three here. This is great for G2. A oh, good ultimate perfect. onto Ming, combined with the ultimate from Yanko, sets up for a quick pick. And then Karsa and Jahu are like, all right, let's get something back here. Perks is overstepped. He buys so much time with the damage reduction on the W, combined with the stopwatch, and he then goes in. Who Unreal. expects him to go in? He then gets the shield from the Sterex to dive out, and then the 2v2, Akali's like, yeah, I think I can take this, and then all kinds of crazy stuff happens. Yeah, I mean, they're able to buy so much time with the crowd, with the double stopwatch, with the Sterex gauge, and the all-important Tom Kench ultimate brings in reinforcements here, allowing G2 to win that fight. Well, there's no way Zakali and Irelia will be allowed to do the draft <laughs> in the next game by RNG. At least I don't anticipate that to be true. And the gold graph, you can see the scale. Yes, RNG had a lead of around 1.4K at some point. It is now 9.7 thousand gold in favor of G2 Esports, a team wasn't even expected to be here. A team that had to take down Shulker Nulfir in the regional qualifier gauntlet and stepped up and continues to step up against every threat in their way. Now, we have to remember that the Baron was secured after G2 found an impressive fight after Wonder got picked off. You could put, say on paper, G2 shouldn't have secured that Baron. However, the Baron now spawns in less than a minute. Well, All right, Ming's gonna be jumping back in. Uzi's the target. Stamp United's being channeled down, but Ming will go down. Wonders on a killing spree as Parsa is caught amongst G2 Esports. Uzi is killed in the back end as Wonder is flying through the map. And it's a Yon and has got himself another kill and Perks jumps on the back end with the Vanguard's edge. Inhibitor is exposed, the Nexus turrets are falling, and G2 Esports punch back, defying all odds, and prove they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with RNG, one-to-one -one in the series. And I was just about to talk about how the setup for Baron was gonna be really important for G2, and they go, you know what? Forget it, let's just fight it. They stop the engage from Ming, they end up turning it around, they end up finding a big victory over RNG, and for me, this is a surprise because I thought the RNG would let Heimerdinger through, and that is what would allow G2 to find the win, but they stuck to their style, they got Aurelia Akali, they played the 1-3-1, one, one, and they find a big win. And Worlds, again, just keeps delivering. It's been showing us time and time again, no one is unbeatable. No one is infallible. You see, <laughs> RNG losing a team fight yep. to G2 in a 5v4 by the Baron yes, and to lose that game. Uzi face-checking. There's sentences I didn't think <laughs> I was going to say today for a breakdown on how G2 equalized this series. Let's hear from my analysts. Thank you very much. Quick shot. What a turnaround for G2, pushing us to one and one in the series. It felt very doom and gloom coming out of that first game because of how dominant and how ahead Uzi got. And even coming <laughs> out of the early laning phase, you know, we had me and DeFisher saying, maybe they have to ban the Lucian. Like, how do you stop him from being so lane dominant? But much like game one, G2 had huge soul lane advantages. Mm -hmm. And unlike game one, they found a way to use them. Yes, and I think unlike game one also, they got the leads a little bit earlier. It wasn't a trade farm, Aatrox Urgot for 25 minutes before Aatrox got ahead. It was literally from the start. The Akali would be like 20 CS up, the Irelia in the mid lane would start forcing plays with perks. And I think that was a big difference. And then the Tom Kent. Okay, I was gonna say, let's be real, Deficio. If I could tell you that G2 would get Akali, Tom Kent, Aurelia, Varus, and Gragas. Would the you dream, be a happy camper? The dream comp in 
If you just have the Heimerdinger. The Heimerdinger is probably the only thing missing in that G2 perfection comp. Frost, what are your thoughts on this matchup? Which is so strange because I felt like, you know, there has always been a bit of pride in uh, RNG, especially with their drafts. I thought for sure that the Heimer would be let through. They've been respecting the Heimer, but they don't respect the Akali Aurelia. And for me, it feels like that they thought that the Shin might be the answer. That you see, you know, either the 1-3-1s, one, one, so you are able to play a side lane or try to impact a side lane by having a, a Shin, or when Aurelia and Akali try to blitz back onto Uzi, that you have the Shin uh, shield to absorb it, but frankly, they bet on it and it burned them. Yeah, and I think um, they were probably not expecting the G2 bot lane to actually start joining fights so early despite mm. being so far down because they took bot lane to it, they took top lane to it, we showed the gold difference from Uzi, it was like 1300 in the early game, it looked doomed for Yanen and Wadid, but then what G2 will do is they will just start saying, you know what, this 2v2 laning phase is over, we start fighting around our mid lane now, and Wadid will on cooldown, ult into the mid lane, sometimes alone, sometimes bring Jan in with him. And when they do that, they start for they take the fight away from Uzi and yeah. the 2v2, and they move the fight to the solo laners, which is the problem for RNG, but the strength of G2. Yeah, which is so weird because I know that Shaohu can be a great mid laner. And I know that Let Me can do better than down ADC, yes. At least I think they can, because I've seen them do it in the past. Yet uh, this has happened two games in a row now, and I'm I'm now questioning whether or not RNG can win just playing through bottom lane. If their soul lanes are going to go down 80 CS by 25 minutes in each game, because even like, yes, game one was dominant, right? Yeah. They never tripped up and they were able to close the game. But if the game stretches to 35 minutes to 40 minutes, right? It's a, it's a pretty narrow win condition for RNG. And it basically requires a player like Uzi to not make mistakes. And you heard Quick Shot say mm -hmm. it. He didn't think he'd ever be saying Uzi face check for the loss, but that's exactly <laughs> what happens around the Baron. G2 picking up plenty of kills. The Baron on the back end, all because RNG was just pushing forward. Yeah, individual decision-making errors, and Uzi makes the first one Ooh, probably the most egregious perks. after very fancy uh, footwork by Perks, but going over this wall, not keeping track of where the enemy is, and just frankly uh, feeding or, or power entering. That'd be yeah, no kind of channel. inexcusable from the best player uh, in has the world time right to now. Stack his cooldowns. I mean, yeah. Perks just was also there, but what Jankos just gets the one shot. The rest of this fight was also uh, pretty high mechanics, and let me also drop the ball. He's going to miss a taunt flash towards the end that would have been able to kill Hjarnan, but that doesn't happen. Obviously, the teleport comes in from behind, and RNG has to improvise. And oftentimes, RNG wins these improv improvisation battles, but G2 soul laners, we say again and again, are so damn good that they're able to actually outplay in these close situations. And unfortunately for RNG, this wasn't the only individual mistake that they made. You then have that uh, crazy 1-3-1 one, one, that once G2 had the Baron, and you know, Karsa and Xiao who are just hard chasing down the mid lane while the rest of their base is on fire. I can understand the mistakes following that Baron a little bit more, only because at that point, G2's in the driver's seat, right? Yes. This is the, that's the kind of game that G2 wants to play. Mm -hmm. With control of the map, boom, into the 1-3-1, one, one, and then it felt like RNG had no chance. Yeah, that's why they were trying to force right there with the play onto Perks, but he completely outplays it, lands a stun onto Uzi as well, who then gets hit by Yana and Salty, and he was low. Then he face checks and he dies, right? But that's kind of what it always will happen. When you draft Lucian, you're like, win early, we start snowballing the game, but this time around, it didn't actually happen, other than his own advantage, mm -hmm. and that's when he, forced, uh, he felt forced to take these fights. But the problem for me with G2 now is we say, like, oh, is Lucian, is it going to work? It did work game one. Mm -hmm. It worked for the start of game two. Mm -hmm. And Orangey can just pick blue side, mm -hmm. and they can ban Heimerdinger, Akali, Tom Kench. And you just remove three of the best picks so this kind of draft will not happen again. Deficio jumping straight to the negative. We haven't even talked not about the MasterCard saying. player of the game I'm just yet. Saying let me build, let me build your team up, my friend. Wonder, massive performance on the Aurelia out of the top lane for G2. And to be frank, we were going back and forth. Do you give it to Wonder? Do you give it to Perks? Uh, frankly, at the very end of the day, I think that Wonder was just a little bit more on the ball than Perks was, a little bit more to the early rotation for a lot of these plays, and really showed up on the back half of it. Shout out to Wadid as well on the TK. Oh, yeah. uh, in there up being very important once he got out of the laning phase. Yeah, also just heard RNG blue side is expected. No subs, so the MLXG level is not unlocked. Who's feeding my analyst yeah. information? Of Usually course. that's oh, like I the one too. piece yeah. of knowledge <laughs> I have over everyone else. And now Jack gets to reveal. Yes, RNG to blue side. If you want to jump into your doom and gloom now, you may. If they ban Tom Kench <laughs> and the Akali. But there was no Heimer ban there.
Oh, there is this Heimerdinger, this Akal, this Tom Ken. Oh, so okay. What was there? I, I, I want to know. <laughs> I want to know fr from you. I know RNG. Uh, you've said in the past will be unbeatable in best of fives. After watching that game, do you still believe that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. My prediction was 3-1. I knew that RNG oh, yeah, would but, fumble but a draft. But he's saying unbe okay. unbeatable over the best of five. Yeah, yeah. Is, right. So do you still believe that RNG is unbeatable in best of five series? Yeah, I think that RNG look at that game. And even though a lot of people will look at that draft and say uh, G2 had the outscaling advantage and that team fights would be hard, I will always still wait that RNG are such good team fighters. Of course, there will be times where they just randomly face check into bushes. We've seen Let Me do it. We just saw Uzi do it. Like, they are not infallible. But if you are a betting person, then I have to bet on RNG. 90% yeah. of the time, they're going to win the 5v5. I think they go backstage and they say, that was an execution error. You probably shouldn't walk into the uh, darkness, but I don't think they think anything else from that. Yeah, I, I'm just, I do think RNG is still the favorite in the series. The blue side, I think. Do you think it's 90%? I don't, I don't even know. Oh, I said like, they would 90% of team we just, okay. Saw, oh, okay, okay. we just saw KT lose to IG, and we just saw like two narrow win condition picks by RNG that are, that are making, RNG is making themselves play perfect. And I didn't feel like they'd have to go to that right. this early in the tournament, right? So it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting rest of the series and an exciting rest of the world. Nobody did, but that's the story of Worlds 2018, is that you're gonna have to outperform expectation if you wanna make it to the finish line as the tournament continues to ramp up. Remember that you can add to the tournament's prize pool by picking up championship Kha'Zix bundles, which include team-specific chromas and recalls so that you can show your support in-game. G2 and RNG are at one and one. Find out who takes the lead in game three right after this. And God's edge bounces in, but Perks is left alone. He's left to die. Manages to pick up first blood. Traded back with Corsa. Can I flash out here? Is it good? Can I, I'm flashing out here. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, nice. No, the the okay, nice. I'm out of and Xiao Hu is dropped in the back line. Wonders looking for Corsa, and Ming is running for his life. Let me down. Your and G are down, and G2 Ace Royal never give up. Should we can dash, we can dash. Okay, okay. I can dash, I can dash, I can dash. I can dash. Oh, I can dash. I'm good at baiting. <laughs> I can't believe it. Wonders on a killing spree as Corsa is caught amongst G2 Esports. Uzi is killed in the back end as Wonder is flying through the map, buying all odds, and prove they can go toe to toe with RNG, one to one in the series. Welcome to Assist of the Week, presented by State Farm. Since we know the importance of lending a hand, we want to highlight players and plays that help the team bring home the big W. If you have a favorite assist from this week that you want us to highlight, tweet the clip with the hashtag State Farm Assist, and we may feature it in a future episode. So get out there and bring some support.